Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Mystical. It is 10.2, and with that, there have been some updates to fist weaving. So today, I'm going to give you a guide on everything you need to know to fist weave, starting from races, rotation, stats, everything you're going to need to know to be successful with fist weaving in PvP. I want to start off with when you should fist weave, because there are some people that fist weave full time, and then there's some people that don't fist weave at all. So, and I'm one of those people that does it when I have to. So I fist weave when there are pets that you can cleave your damage off of. You'll I'll explain it, but Black Elk can cleave damage. And Unholy Decays, Demo Locks, Shadow Priest, any casters that don't have a whole lot of mobility like Destro Locks are also really good targets for you to fist weave. And it also depends on who you're queuing with. So if you're playing with melee, it's really good because you get value out of talents like you're close to heart, which makes it so they take increased healing. It's not mandatory, but it's still really, really good. And that's kind of what I pretty much base my judgment off of if I should fist weave or not, depending on what I'm queuing into and who I'm queuing with. Starting at the beginning, you're going to want to choose a race on what you want to play. If you're trying to min-max, there are a few options on Alliance. You could go Dwarf or Dark Iron Dwarf. Those are really solid. They get rid of magic, curses, and bleed effects for both Dwarf and Dark Iron Dwarf. I think Dark Iron Dwarf, you get a stat boost, and Dwarf, you get a physical damage reduction. Uh, they're both really good. It just depends on what's good, really. So, Feral Jirts, Assassination Rogue, uh, Affliction Warlocks, those are like the main classes you want to look out for. If they're good, you're probably going to see a lot of Dwarfs. There's Night Elf. Night Elf is really, really good. This has Shadow Meld, and this allows you to avoid a CC, anything like that. If teams are targeting you and you Shadow Meld, they will detarget you, so it gives you some breathing time, maybe like one second to get a heal off. Um, so this is really, really good. And then you have Gnome, which is, I think, one of the better races for Fist Weaving because you get Escape Artist, which allows you to dispel Roots and Slows on you. And since you're Fist Weaving and you want uptime, you're probably going to want some kind of racial that does that. So Gnome is really good. If it was up to me, my main is Gnome. I really like Gnome. I think it's the overall really, really good race for when you're casting, Mist Weaving, and Fist Weaving. You can go Gnome or Night Elf, depending on what you're queuing uh, as Alliance. For Horde, it really comes down to two. It's Orc or Undead. Those are your only two options. I don't even think Orc is that good. They nerfed Hardiness by 50% in PvP. So now the stun reduction that you get is only 10%. There aren't a lot of teams are going to be targeting you. And even if they do, you, you're probably playing with people that can survive or help you survive. So I don't think Orc is that insane. I think you're better off just going undead. The Will of the Forsaken is insane, especially with the meta. It's just always been a lot of dragons, especially Augmentation Evokers. You have dragons, which Sleepwalk is affected by. It. Priest Fear, Warlock Fear, Warrior Fear, anything like that. You can get out of it with this uh, second trinket essentially so i think undead is the best horde race if you're trying to min max and on the alliance side you're gonna go gnome or night elf for stats you're gonna want haste verse crit mastery you don't want any mastery you get very little value out of your mastery most of the value comes from haste because the more haste you have the faster globals if the faster globals the more damage you can do which results in more healing so i have about i have too much haste i have about 33% haste, 36% haste, 28% verse. You don't need this much haste. I would say anything 30% haste or more is good. Versatility, you ob obviously want to stack as much versatility as you can, but you definitely just want to stack haste, verse, and just forget about every other stat. Embellishments. This is an awkward thing for Fist Weavers. They just nerfed Fangs of Adornment by 50% in PvP, so you're not going to get any value. I mean, you're going to get some, but you're not going to get a whole lot. So I would recommend, and then they also nerfed undulating sport cloak so it's 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 really weird You're, it's in a weird spot for for embellishments for fist weaving i would recommend crafting the boots i don't even have them crafted but it's the infurious boots they give you a stat bonus every 30 seconds when you interrupt or cc somebody so that stat bonus is really good because that stats those stats do help you do more damage which gives you more healing so i'd probably do the boots and then the second one Probably one of the newer ones, the Verdant, the Verdant one where that gives versatility is really solid because you're going to be doing a lot of healing. There's no stop, so giving your teammates versatility, plus you're going to be closer, so you're going to give them more verse. Um, there is that one. You could do Sport Cloak, which gives some survivability. It's just so nerfed, uh, just overall in PvE and PvP, that I just feel like it's not worth it. Precog is another option, but you're not really casting that much outside of Shailun's Gift. And most of the time you port, and then you port back. So it, it, I don't think Precog's worth it. So I would say go with the 
the the boots, the Infurious boots for the staff bonus, and then have the second one be the newest one that gives versatility to your teammates when you heal. Next up is tier set, and it's really, really good for fist weaving. You're gonna want both the two and four set. For the two set, whenever you renew mist, it applies Chi Harmony, and that target will take 50% more healing. In PvP, it's 25% more healing, but it doesn't matter because it's 25% more healing, which is crazy. Um, it, the reason why you want it is because it does work with rapid diffusion. So when you rising sun kick and you put a renewing mist on somebody, that renewing mist will apply the chi harmony, uh, which is fantastic. If one of these targets has renewing mist, they would also have the chi harmony. So that's really, really important. And then the four set, whoever has renewing mist on them um, with chi harmony, it restores 20% of the healing you do to them while it's up. And then it will heal for that amount when, when it expires. So that's really, really good. It's just passive healing essentially your four set but the most important thing is the two set is crazy crazy good um as far as what stats or like what slots to, i would recommend helm it has crit but it has a ton of verse same with the shoulders shoulders have haste mastery chest has haste verse and then the, the hands have crit verse and then i don't think you want the boots or the you don't want the legs because it's crit mastery mastery is really bad and then crit is okay, but you can just go to the conquest vendor and get haste versus legs. So those are your best stats. Um, so I would just get the helm, shoulders, chest, gloves, drop the legs, get the conquest legs, and that should be it for your tier set. Now we have our talents, and I will start with the left hand side. This is going to be a little bit different than cast and mystery because you're kind of focusing on damage, but nothing really to highlight. There is one flex point. If you're playing with a class spec that has a spam will slow or something you don't need to run disable you can put this point pretty much anywhere instant vivify probably is going to get much value you're probably going to want to put it in strength of spirit because with the expel harm changes you're going to be able to keep yourself alive a lot easier with expel harm it's just a quick instant heal for you so probably put it into strength of spirit move it you know wherever you want um you're going to get ferocity of Xuan and fast feet for extra damage you're going to be playing roll so you get three charges of roll with the celerity and the proof roll Outside of that, there really isn't much that changes. I actually think Diffuse Magic is probably better than Yulon's Whisper, just because I think you need the extra defensives, especially before you get put into a stun, and I think you're always going to be the target. So left-hand side, nothing too crazy here. On the right-hand side, obviously, you're going to be fist weaving, so you're going to follow the left left side of the tree. You're going to get Ophaline Stomp, which is what activates your Ancient Teachings. Ancient Teachings is what allows you to convert your damage into healing. So this makes it so whenever you Essence Font or Feyland Stomp, your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Rising Sun Kick heal within heal targets for 150% of the damage you do within 40 yards. So that's a huge change. It was 30 yards, and now it's 40 yards. So now classes that port like Warlock or Mages that Blink Away or any caster, you're going to be able to heal them, which is really, really good. And then you're going to get Ancient Concordance, which makes it so your Blackout Kick leaves people so it hits three extra targets and has an additional 10 percent chance to reset the cooldown your rising sun kick which is it freaking insane and then you have awakened fan line which makes it so your tiger palm also strikes additional targets which is going to help build up stacks of teaching to the monastery it's, it's all connected with fist weaving it's really it's really really cool they've done a really good job with fist weaving every single spell is connected um so you're also going to get chi g you're going to get your celestial harmony because that puts little chi cocoons on people and on the right hand side, you do play Shailun's Gift. Uh, you have to now. The Sh Misty Peaks is terrible. It, sadly, I used to go Misty Peaks into Rising Mist, but they nerfed it by 50% for some reason. So, no more Misty Peaks. On the right hand side, you have your Rapid Diffusion. You're going to get your Shailun's Gift. You're going to play the Energizing Brew, which makes it so you channel 50% faster with Mana T, and then you get more mana, which is amazing. And then one of the biggest changes this patch. Is that each concordance used to be two talent slots, but now it's only one. So you get an extra talent and you get to play Focus Thunder. And this is so good. I don't I don't know if people realize how good this is. Because you weren't playing this before. You you couldn't you there was not, not enough room to play Focus Thunder before. And now it's just it, it's so good. Um, and then you're gonna come down here and then you're gonna get rising mist, which is what ex, it extends your renewing mist and develop mist on people. So if you go over here and you're renewing mist somebody, and I'll put this on focus. And I rising sun kick, you could see it the duration gets um extended with my rising sun kick. I'll try to do it again. Watch it. Boom, it goes further. So rising mist is really, really important. You essentially don't need to cast renewing mist ever because you're gonna be playing rapid diffusion and you're gonna have rising mist. You're gonna have rapid diffusion apply the renewing mist, you're gonna have rising mist extending those hots. You have a lot of good options for PvP talents. I would say I'm gonna start with the mandatory ones. I think the two mandatory talents you're gonna to wanna to play are Zen Spheres and Peace Weaver. So what Zen Spheres does is you can put a sphere on both an ally and an enemy, 
When you put it on an ally, it's called Sphere of Hope, and it increases your healing done to them by 15%, which is crazy. This also stacks with your two set. So you're, you're going to be doing 25% plus 15% more healing, which is just insanely good. If you put on an enemy, all of the damage you do to that target by you and your teammates is increased by 10%, and that target does 10% less damage to you. So if you're playing against somebody and they're like they're targeting you and you put Sense Sphere, this target's going to do... 10% less damage to you and then your teammates are also going to be doing 10% more damage to them and of course you're going to hear me say it a lot the more damage you do the more healing you're going to do so that's very very important and then peace fever of course is just going to help you stay alive so this makes it so restorals cooldown is reduced by 50% and makes anyone healed by it immune by to magical effects for two seconds uh restoral you could use it while stunned so if you're getting swapped to or you get a hit or someone you're about to get cc'd or something you could use restore while stunned make everyone immune and you're going to be fine. It, it's a great heal. So those two, I think, are the two mandatory talents. As far as this third slot, there are a few options. So the first one is Eminence. This is what makes it so you could port while stunned. If you're playing with a class that can help you out and stay alive, like a Rep Pally or something like that, or like an Aug Evoker, you know, something that can keep you alive, I don't think Eminence is necessary because this is just going to be used to help you stay alive while you're stunned. Or if you're playing against casters, you don't need to play it because most of them, you know, they don't have a stun. Uh, outside of that, you're going to grab a weapon, really good versus warriors. Marks hunters just stop their burst damage, so that's really good. Mighty Ox Kick is a little bit of a meme, but it's actually, it, it, it's it's good. It's decent. It's it's another interrupt. So if you're playing against like a Warlock or like a Shadow Priest, you could play Mighty, or a Mage, you could play Mighty Ox Kick, knock them up in the air. Uh, it's kind of funny, but I think the 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 most often option you're gonna be playing is Alpha Tiger. So what what Alpha Tiger does is whenever you tiger palm somebody, you get twenty percent haste. It it's a thirty second internal cooldown on that target, but if you swap targets, you get the buff. So what you'll do is you tiger palm, get the Alpha Tiger buff, and as soon as it starts to go away, just hit a new target. And this new target can be anything. It can be a totem. It can be a pet. Like. The reason why demo locks hate us so much is because we can use Alpha Tiger. We can take advantage of Alpha Tiger by hitting their new imps that they summon. So like, keep that in mind. Any, I'm I'm just have 20% haste. My my haste is 60% right now, and that's almost permanent versus like pet classes, hunters, demo locks, unholy decays. It's nearly permanent. So it, that's why it's so good. But you know, you get that from totems as well. So I think this is gonna be this is a pretty common talent. Um, that I play for PvP. This third one just changes depending on what I'm queuing into. But for the most part, you're playing Zen Sphere as PvP for every game, just changing up this third talent. And now that we have our race stats and everything, let's start learning the rotation. So we talked about some certain talents. Obviously, Ancient Teachings is our main way of healing. It's pretty much our only way of healing. And then we also have our Feyline Stomp, Awake Ancient Concordance, Awaken Feyline, and Teaching of the Monastery. So this is the bread and butter of the rotation. You're going to use your Feyline Stomp to activate your Ancient Teachings. You get the buff right there. And then from here, what you're trying to do is you're trying to Rising Sun Kick as much as possible. So Rising Sun Kick hits the hardest, which means it's going to do the most healing. And then you're going to use Tiger Palm to build up stacks of Teachings of the Monastery. I get two stacks because of Awakened Feyline, which makes it so my Tiger Palm hits twice. So I get two stacks of that. And you're going to Blackout Kick to reset your Rising Sun Kick. So Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. I got to reset. Got a rising sun kick tiger palm blackout kick i got rising sun kick and you just keep doing that over and over again if you lose the buff you fail and stop again and you just do it over and over don't want to forget your zen sphere as well so put that up so you're doing 10 percent more damage tiger palm blackout kick rising sun kick and you're just doing that over that's that's the basic rotation you're doing that over and over again you could also weave in some chi waves so chi wave i normally use when like you know if i'm initially you know, if, if their game just starts and I haven't got to them, or if I can't connect to them, I'll use a little Chi Wave. It doesn't do the most healing, but it's like it's some healing. But you're not going to get a lot of value out of it. The next thing you're going to do is start weaving in some Thunder Focus Teas. And the primary way you're going to be using Thunder Focus Tea is to reduce the cooldown of your Rising Sun Cake by 9 seconds. That's really, really good. And you also get two charges of Thunder Focus Tea because we're playing Focus Thunder. So you're going to activate. You're going to put your Zen Sphere up. You're going to use your Feyline Stomp. You're going to Thunder Focus Tea. Rising Sun Kick, and now it's only a three second cooldown. So you're going to Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. So for, I don't even, you, you get like four Rising Sun Kicks in the span of like five or six globals. Not only is that a, a lot of damage, the healing you do is just, it, it's just insane. 
every and you have that every 30 seconds so you're going to be able to do a ton of healing you don't want to waste your thunder focus tea the other use for thunder focus tea if you want to is to immediately heal somebody with your enveloping mist and make it instant that's also a use if someone's like really low or you know you need the extra healing you could definitely go for like a thunder focus tea enveloping mist and then you could use rising sun kick to extend it because you have rising mist and then you just tiger palm blackout kick get the reset rising sun kick and keep extending that hot uh which is which is a fair option but I, most of the time you're going to want a thunder focus t and rising sun kick to get the cooldown reduction on your rising rising sun kick the next thing you're going to want to start using is using your chi g so chi g is actually a little bit it's a little bit complicated i'm not gonna lie so when you use your chi g you get stacks of it and you get one stack every time you use blackout kick rising sun kick or spinning crank kick and it heals allies and then when you get to three stacks of chi g it makes your envelopment mist instant which is freaking amazing so it also makes your immunes to slows and roots which is really really good it lets you have uptime when you need it um but something to keep in mind is your blackout kicks hit more than one target so that's where it gets you don't want to waste your stacks of chi g so what i've been trying to do is i've been you build up stacks so really quickly you get um two stacks of chi in the monastery will make blackout kick hit three times keep that in mind so what i'll do here i'll get rid of these stacks i'll tiger palm build up stacks make sure you get your phalanx stomp i'll chi g i will blackout kick and then i get instantly three stacks of chi g you get an instant velvet mist and then you rising sun kick tiger palm blackout kick and then you get another and then you just you just do that again over and over again you're just doing your rotation and weaving in your instant uh enveloping mist here and you could just see how much healing i'm doing like you're just doing so much healing and you you have that cooldown every minute and then something else you're gonna have to weave into this rotation is your manatee so manatee is it has been changed so you it stacks up to 15 or stacks up to 20. every stack that you consume restores 3600 mana and then for each stack it gives you a one second buff that reduces the mana cost on your spells by 50%. So I'm going to consume 10 stacks right now, or 15. I get a 15 second buff that the mana cost of my spells is reduced by 50%. Feyland Stomp can kind of, if you're spamming it, it can make you run out of mana. If you're using Essence Font as well to activate Ancient Teachings, it can make you consume mana. Um, but you're just going to want to, essentially what I try to do is I try to mana T whenever I'm activating with like Essence Font or Feyland Stomp. You just keep doing that over and over again. The final part of your rotation is your Shaylun's Gift. So Shaylun's Gift is a pretty big, it's, it, it's a pretty big heal. And it allows you to heal basically your entire team or whoever's in line. What I tend to use it for is on myself. So if teams are hitting me, this is how I use Shaylun's Gift in Arena 99% of the time. If I'm getting hit, what I'll do is I'll port, I'll Shaylun's Gift, port back, and then just keep going doing damage. That's 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 how I do it. Because if teams are hitting my teammates, most of the time I can just do damage to keep them alive. But if teams are hitting me, it can be a little bit more complicated. Maybe they're using burst cooldowns I can't heal through. The port allows me to get away. The Shaylin's gift allows me to recover. And then I can just keep go back to keep doing damage. All right, and now let's put it all together for our rotation. You're gonna start off in the arena. You could start off by putting Renewing Mist on your teammates. That's fine. It'll probably be the only time you press it. You're gonna put Zen Sphere on a teammate and on your on an enemy. So you can put on your teammate and an enemy. You're gonna run in. You're gonna just use your Feyline Stomp. You're gonna use Disable if you're running it. Tiger Palm. And you're gonna Rising Sun Kick. Tiger Palm. Blackout Kick. Rising Sun Kick. You're just gonna keep doing damage. We're even a Chi Wave there as well. And then let's just say they start using their burst, burst cooldowns. What you're gonna do is you're gonna Tiger Palm. Chi G. Blackout Kick. You get an instant Velping Mist. Rising Sun Kick. Tiger Palm. Blackout Kick. And you get instant velvet mist, and you just keep doing this over and over until Chi G's gone. We have, we should be able to maybe get one more. Uh, no, that might be a tiger palm. I think we just, uh, that's it. Yeah. But then we get a rising sun kick out of it, and we're going to blackout kick as well. If they start to swap to you, port, use your Shaylu's gift, port back. You start to lose the buff. You can Feyland Stomp again. And if you, let's just say you couldn't get any resets on your Feyland Stomp, and you need to use Essence Font, you're going to mana T, use an Essence Font, cancel it, and just go back to doing damage. And now let's, you know they keep doing damage you just use your thunder focus t rising sun kick into a tiger palm blackout kick into a rising sun kick and you just see the damage i'm doing i mean look at this damage and i'm a healer like that's the thing is you're, you're not giving up any healing to do this damage you're this is all damage that's converting to healing fist weaving also has some cooldowns i talked about chi g a lot so chi g is going to be your primary cooldown that you're going to use one minute cooldown you're going to use this when your team's starting to fall behind 
anything like that. Really, really solid heal. You're also going to have Life Cocoon, which is, again, one of your primary cooldowns. This is going to make it so you have, you put a pretty decent absorption shield on people. It gives you time to recover. It's really good before you get put into crowd control as well so you don't come out. And then, you know, your teammate is still mostly alive. And then that's pretty much it. Those are your two cooldowns. And then you have Restore as well. So you could use this while stunned. This is what you could use to avoid CC, keep your teammates alive while stunned. Or if teams are going you, you could use a boss stun to keep yourself alive. Anything like that. This is a very good heal. You, It's very important not to stack these cooldowns, like, at all. You, you know, it, it's it's very bad if you have to life cocoon and chi at the same time. Because you don't have, you know, you get the little chi cocoons on people. And then you also have, you know, the life cocoon. And you're also doing a ton of healing with your chi -Gi. So, it's a very, very awkward spot to be in. Because once you lose these, all you have is Toro. And that's, you know, it's not going to be enough. Especially if you're into non- magical classes like warriors and windwalkers is you're not going to get a whole lot of value out of it so try not to stack these cooldowns thunder focus t on a 30 second cooldown is just going to help you heal but it's not going to help you know keep you know keep your team alive a whole lot you're going to want to you're kind of relying on these two to keep your team alive as far as cooldowns for yourself you do have a few options you have diffuse magic dampen harm and you have four proof those are your main three bunch you're going to be pressing you kind of just, again, you don't want to overlap them. Fort Brew lasts the longest. I think it's, what, 15 seconds? Yeah, 15 seconds. So if you're playing against a comp that has longer cooldowns, I think uh, Devastation Invokers have like a 20-second long cooldown or a 20-second long duration on the cooldowns. Press Fort Brew. If there's a stun DR that's coming up on you and, you know, you don't know when they're going to go, Fort Brew is going to keep you alive, hopefully. But Diffuse Magic, Dampen Harm should be used against, like, Warriors. Chaos Bolt from Destro Locks. Anything that has hard-hitting spells, try to pre and harm those stuns. And then Diffuse Magic, really good versus anything magic. You know, Warlocks, even Rep Pallies, DKs, anything like that. So that's really important. It's just the most important thing is to try not to overlap them. Otherwise, the next stun on you could probably kill you. Next up is Macros, and I don't have a whole lot of them. I use Arena 1, 2, 3 Macros for Paralysis and Disarm and all that. Um, I also use the Ping System. <laughs> with them just because it's important these are probably the most important macros you could use what this is going to do is this is going to target your most recent target so this is really important with chiji i'll show you why so when you chiji right you're going to get an instant blackout kick or you're going to get instant velvet mist you're going to need to target your teammate and put an velvet mist on them but what happens you, now you're going to have to click your target what you could do is you could just blackout kick and it targets your recent target and that way you don't need to you don't need to click here and then click back here. All you need to do is target one and then it, it goes back to targeting your most recent enemy, which is fantastic. And I have this for blackout kick, uh, for rising sun kick, and for tiger palm. I think those are the most important macros though, because I don't use any other macros. Oh, life cocoon macro. This is obviously a very important macro. This is gonna make it so you don't life cocoon accidentally yourself. So if you're Teammates mind controlled, you're not gonna accidentally life cocoon yourself. If you're in an RBG and someone dies, you're not accidentally life cocoon yourself. So all these macros are in the paste bin in the description as well. So they're all yours. Kick one, two, threes. I have taught macro. Oh, dispel party one and two. Just in general, you just want these for healing. Helps you helps you dispel faster. So that's really, really good. If you want to put a marker down on your port, this is this will do it. You need to be in a raid group or in a, a group to do it. But you could use, you know, world marker eight or whatever one you want. But that's pretty much it for macros. I don't really use too many macros outside of Arena 1, 2, 3 macros. What comps are the best? You're going to want to play with Ret Warrior. It's probably your best comp. You know, that's uh, Ret Pally is going to help you stay alive. Help sank you. Warrior is going to help you stay alive. They have a lot of... A lot, that whole, all those Both those classes have so much utility to help you. You could also play Turbo. Turbo is really good. The Enhanced Shaman needs to be good. But, you know, as long as they get Tremor and Share CC and heal when they have to they'll also help you stay alive or help themselves stay alive casters you could play with the frost mage because what frost mage does is it, they fraud they you know they stole everybody so you could play with the frost mage with like a boomy frost mage with a shadow priest something that'll help you get out of crowd control or have utility something like that is also pretty good maybe like a, a destro lock frost mage or something like that the just the extra healing even a frost mage ellie could be pretty solid as well with the slows and everything and utility. So anything like that will work as far as comps go. The most important thing though is you just play with classes that can stay alive. That's it. Stay alive while you're crowd controlled and you're going to be fine. And that is it for me. Hopefully this is helpful for anyone that is new to fist weaving or starting to learn fist weaving. Um, I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And that is it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.